Every movie you have ever seen probably has used VFX and if you are new to the CGI industry, you've been probably hearing this word a lot. So you might be wondering what it is and what it is used for in relation to the movie making industry. In simple terms, visual effects is the process of combining computer generated graphics with real world life footage such as creatures, objects, environments and effects which are impossible or very expensive to implement otherwise. Major production studios use a variety of software that are available to the public and in-house tools developed by studios themselves. By the way, you won't be able to get your hands on those tools even if your life depended on it, I mean studios in-house tools. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna talk about those tools that anyone can get. Tools such as Houdini, Cinema 4D, After Effects and so on. And specifically for this video, we're gonna talk about Blender. Blender being a newcomer to the movie industry, it has been used in movie productions of some notable titles, in combination with other software packages of course. And seeing that its development picked up pace in recent years, many studios are now considering its integration with their production pipelines. Such titles include Spider-Man 2, Captain America Winter Soldier, in addition to Annabelle. In this video, we're gonna go into detail about various aspects and techniques used in VFX and demonstrate how well Blender is capable in those areas to give you an idea about how fit it is as a visual effects tool. Before we do that, let me take a moment and talk about Render Pool, which is the render farm solution for artists and studios using Blender Cycles or Radeon Pro Render for Maya, Blender, Houdini, and so on. Whether you are a beginner or a professional, one area where everyone agrees that it cannot be optimized enough is render times. Because no one likes to wait for the render to finish, especially if it is an animation. One frame can take up to 3 minutes, especially if the scene is complicated. With 30 frames per second, time will start adding up exponentially. And let's not talk about rework and mistakes where you need to sit through the whole process again and again multiple times. So, render farms such as RenderPool solve this issue by providing high-speed rendering via massively distributed parallel GPU nodes that split the work between hundreds of GPUs, thus reducing the time it takes to render your projects up to 20 times faster compared to your own machine. So, there is no need for any expensive add-ons or server client manager. Everything can be done directly in your internet browser. No hassles, no time wasted, and no breaking the bank. And now, RenderPool is even more affordable as they announce their unlimited plan. In one flat rate, you can use their cloud rendering power every day without any worries about point limitations, time limitations, or budgeting constraints. For professional artists or animation studios with greater or larger rendering needs, you can immediately benefit from this plan. Starting at $140 a month, you can use unlimited power in packets of 4, 8 or even 12 nodes using high performance NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. No setup, no plugins, just power, render and re-render as many times as you need. So if you want to try RenderPool and what they have to offer and all their features, you can follow the link in the description of this video. Rotoscoping is one of the common things in the visual effects industry, which is a technique of tracing objects of real life footage frame by frame to isolate them from the background, which allows filmmakers to add CGI elements and environments to the footage that seem to interact with the rotoscope objects. Blender has a multitude of tools to composite nodes that allow it to rotoscope video clips. One method is to use alpha masks and trace the object manually frame by frame and then use it later on the compositor as a node. Although this method gets the job done, it's still a bit behind compared to rotoscoping tools such as those of After Effects, namely the Roto Brush tool that allows you to brush over the object that you want to rotoscope and After Effects will automatically create the outline of the edge and trace it automatically throughout the footage with little to no tweaking, saving you a lot of time and effort compared to doing it manually. The other common technique in the visual effects industry is chroma keying, which is done by shooting a footage in the front of a colored screen usually green or blue, then using the color key node for the compositor to remove the color background and replace it with the alpha channel that in turn can be replaced with any background or environment. The color key node of Blender is quite decent and does the job easily, but needless to say that this technique can be used only with a specific setup. So in general, 
rotoscoping in Blender isn't exactly on par with other software, but it can do a decent job as we said. And it can be a bit tedious because it lacks some of the automation tools that other programs have. What most people refer to when talking about VFX is the visual tricks and elements that are laid on top of the live action footage such as explosions, fire, electricity, smoke, natural elements, lasers and so on. The go-to 3D software for simulation effects has always been Houdini for its advanced capabilities with simulations and its node-based workflow. And this is the reason why major studios use it primarily in their productions. Blender, on the other hand, is still not advanced in these regards, especially in terms of its built-in simulation tools. But it is building its way up slowly but surely. So when it comes to simulations, most professionals that work in Blender would rather use other programs for simulations and then import them into Blender. And even other popular software in the industry such as 3ds Max or Maya use third-party plugins such as VumaFax, Phoenix FD, Thinking Particles and so on. But to be fair to Blender, it has introduced major updates and changes to its simulation engine with MantaFlow for fluid simulations and especially with the recent upgrades of the last couple of months, giving it a huge boost in comparison to the old versions in which simulations were outdated comparably. Moreover, Blender simulations can compete with other 3D major programs with the use of third-party add-ons such as Flip Fluids. And starting from version 2.92, Blender introduced Geometry Nodes, which is a node system similar to Material Nodes, but instead it is for constructing and manipulating geometry non-destructively. The system is still in its early stages, but it has shown promising potential and soon it could integrate a simulation system into geometry nodes allowing for a more powerful system that is similar to Houdini's node-based system. Rigging and animation is also an important part of VFX work. Rigging is the process of animating different parts of a 3D mesh using what's called an armature, which is a set of bones that control the part of the mesh that is associated with it. The rigging tools in Blender are pretty advanced, containing a set of tools ranging from weight painting to inverse kinematics and bone constraints and so on. However, Blender lacks some things such as a muscle system, which is a system that simulates the underlying structure of living creatures that consist of muscles and tissues, which is essential for realistic live animal and human rigs, although such functionality is available through third-party add-ons such as Xmuscle. When it comes to animation, Blender is equipped with all the necessary tools for animating and keyframing. Considering that it is a core function of Blender, from the action editor to drivers and dope sheet, Blender offers a complete environment for professional animators. Moreover, the animation process can be made a lot less tedious with the use of motion capture solutions, like mocap suits, which Blender supports by the way, or the more affordable route of using motion tracking to capture character movement. Although it lacks the physics-based character animation capabilities which is present in programs such as Cascador, with which the animator poses his character and the program handles the balance of the whole body in a way that makes sense in terms of physics, adding a whole new level to realism of body and limb movements. Camera tracking is also a huge part of visual effects. It is the process of using elements of the footage to help the program recognize the depth and perspective of the real-life scene so you can add 3 elements to it later that adhere to the scene dimensions, creating the illusion of them being present in the real-life scenes. Blender has a good camera tracking system that contains a multitude of options that ensure a solid motion tracking with various camera settings and models. And it is both automatic and flexible so that you can cut down the amount of effort to achieve a successful tracking. This makes Blender a suitable solution for camera tracking for both hobbyists and professionals working completely inside Blender. To bring everything together, we of course have to go through compositing. Compositing is the part of production in which different elements are combined with live action footage to make sure that all the parts fit together aesthetically to produce the final product. With a multitude of techniques such as color grading, color correction, matte painting and so on. Most big production studios use Nuke for compositing for its capabilities and tools to create the best compositing possible. Other names include Blackmagic Fusion and After Effects, but Blender also has some decent compositing tools that can be used to create something that looks professional. But in comparison with the aforementioned software, it is a bit lacking, 
and it has a long way to go to be used as a complete solution for compositing. However, the compositing capabilities of Blender continue to evolve and new nodes and improvements are being introduced to the compositor constantly, like the Cryptomat and the real-time viewport compositing. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.